No, I think so. So after watching Super Nanny, that you, you see what a real nanny does, that you realize that you know, Mary Poppins is bunk. You know? Hi, I'm Vernon, and this is Kit, and we just watched Mary Poppins Returns. Kit, what did we just watch? Uh, I we watched the movie that retroactively destroyed my childhood memories. Your childhood memories, sort of like mine. Let's talk about what it's supposed to do and what it did not do and how it destroyed your childhood memories in, in the process. It's supposed to make money for the mouse. Uh, I don't know, it's uh, it, it, it's like a bit like The Force Awakens, you know, they tried to uh, have bits from the, from the original, but they also tried to maybe update it a bit. Basically, Mary Poppins returns because um, the Banks children from the first movie are grown up but they feel it adulting. Which and doesn't bank, say much about their nanny, does it? Yeah, strangely, she's still the perfect nanny despite... Her failure with them. Yeah, um, because obviously as a nanny, she didn't teach Ben Wilshaw the skill of balancing a checkbook. Basically, the bank that he works for wants to repossess his house. That's how much of a failure this guy is. Like a bank would bother, I mean, just one house. You know? Repossess it, yeah. All that, all, all that time and effort staying up late and uh, sending two lawyers. I, I don't know, maybe this is some kind of allegory for the big um, financial crisis from 10 years ago and now let's make a political film about evil banks repossessing houses. Except we'll do it with a Mary Poppins film. It's like one guy said about Moby Dick. Yeah, you can talk about allegory or, or whatever, but if Moby Dick doesn't work as a whale, the story doesn't work. So did this story work for you? Why did it not work? If you're a kid, I mean, it's just, oh yeah, all, all, all this fantastical stuff, it's fun, uh, which I, I think that's how, I, this is how I view the first movie now. I, I, I don't really know what the first movie was saying. It's just... Super califragilistic expialidocious, right? That's what the movie said. Did it come from Mary Poppins? Yes. And so it's Feed the Birds. Oh yeah, Feed the Birds. Uh, oh bag. yeah, but I mean, the, the, the songs were beautiful, the first movie. Yes, but do you remember Mr. Banks' song? No. <laughs> Poor guy. But uh, yeah, I mean the songs in the second movie... Uh... Why were they forgettable? I don't know. Different composer? Well, uh, the first Mary Poppins film had the best composers in the world. They were known as the Sherman Brothers. They wrote and composed, okay, they composed the music and wrote the lyrics for most of the Jungle Book, oh. all of Bad Lots and Broomsticks, and Charlotte's Web. Charlotte's Web? Yes, they wrote the music for that. But their most famous composition is a tune that is still very popular today. Happy birthday. No, that was written by someone else. Their, their most popular and memorable tune composition was actually It's a Small World After All. Uh... Nin Manuela Miranda also stars as a chimney sweep or a lamp lighter for this film. But he didn't write any of the songs. Okay. Well, so um, I was expecting him to, that's why I checked the credits. Yeah, I was surprised. Yeah. He okay. Um, I'm surprised because he kind of like um, showboated all the songs that he sang. <laughs> he did his job. Of the main cast, Miranda is the one with the most legit Broadway resume. And yeah. he still can't. He still can't do it. Compared well, to... so, he, he's, he's, he's the Dick Van Dyke replacement. Hollywood does not have the screen uh, songwriting talent. No, they do. It's just of the they, Sherman Brothers. They, at they at did, the level of the Sherman Brothers. They just didn't use it in this movie. Yeah, they hired whoever they hired as composer for this movie. Oh, they did not hire someone better. They should have. Um, the tunes are okay, but the lyrics are pretty hit and miss, I think. And that's a problem. Nah, for me it's the tunes. The, the tunes don't work. No. It also falls short on the same talent for me. That's okay. Emily Blunt is no Julie Andrews. She's okay. She's okay. She can carry a tune. In, in terms of singing, but I, I didn't really like the acting. I, but I think she was just doing her job again. But she she always does a job, and her job is always to offer a caricature. But 
her Mary Poppins came across as kind of cold. A little stiff, rather stiffer than Julie Andrews. Yeah, yeah. Julie Andrews, Mary Poppins was just trying to put on a stiff act. Whereas this Mary Poppins, you feel that it is really stiff. Oh, I, I felt like cold, you know, un, um, not, not really that caring. That She's not as fun, even though they, the kids do end up doing fun things. But it's sort of in spite of her rather than because of her well, half of the time. Uh, well, the adventures were, were pretty decent. Uh, there was some like fan service because... Like, the it, fan service comes from the animated yeah. sequence in this film, yeah. which I thought, well done, well done. They, act for a film in 2017, this has a classic 2D animation sequence. Or what looks like 2D animation. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, that was okay. Uh, but, but for Disney standards, you know, it's not really groundbreaking animation, even on the 2D sort. You but, can tell. But also, um, the problem with Disney now is that they've got this reputation for being really liberal and politically correct. So you, I, I go in like really defensive already. Like, but was there any uh, liberalizing in the movie? I, I, I didn't really notice much. I was expecting more actually, so that, that was okay. Yeah, I, I mean, um, as far as I could tell, the only liberalizing or activism in this movie is when the, the daughter, who's now grown up, um, is a, an activist handing out uh, street signs uh, yeah, that, that's urging a, for better treatment of workers. So no, uh, the, the fan service, because her, her mother was a suffragette. There was a song about it. There was a suffragette song. I remember that. Yeah. So the, 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 that was more fan service than than, than activism. Yeah, which means to say it should actually uh, fill up your meter for not ruining a childhood, isn't it? It's fan service. No, I mean, it, it, you think that there's something special about the movie, and then this watching this one makes you realize that uh, she was really a bad nanny. <laughs> <laughs> there was no lesson there. Uh, she just like um, there, there are a lot of um, platitudes that she teaches the kids, like trust your imagination. But basically, and she, then um, don't judge a book by its cover. But she's basically distracting them with magic. You know? It's like putting them in front of a TV. You know? uh, uh, Is that how, a bad thing? How is that any different? You know, you, you're not really engaging with them. You're just you're just distracting them. So, yeah, she's not a good nanny. <laughs> yeah, well, for me, I I came to watch a film on the basis of just one thing. Um, how good are the songs and how good are the singers? And how great are the set pieces where they dance? It's clear that the songwriting talent is not on par as compared for the first film. Song. Meryl Streep has a cameo, a, a rather uh, chunky cameo, and you can tell why she never had a singing career until Mamma Mia. It also doesn't make sense because Mary Poppins kind of like solves uh, Meryl Streep's problem about not liking her upside down days. Uh, but Allegory. Why didn't she solve it earlier? Uh, she's her cousin. She knew about the Second the cousin. Time. So presumably she didn't like a second cousin that much. <laughs> yeah, so you see, Mary Poppins is a bad governess and she clearly also is a bad relative. Yeah, but okay. What twist. Okay, back to the songs. It's also in the way the songs were used. It, they, they seemed like kind of forced. It's like, oh, this is happening, so we need to sing a song. Did it didn't have... Uh, and sometimes the song did not have much relevance to what was actually happening. It didn't have anything as evocative as like, you know, the... Feed the, the birds. Yeah, feed the birds. You know, this is like sequel by numbers, you know. <laughs> they didn't really have a feel for the, for the original, I think. I just feel this film is... <laughs> is a tad undeserving of a sequel to a really great film. The quality of singing is really uneven. You've got Emily Blunt, who's 
barely serviceable. You've got Mir Mr. Miranda who who is really good at singing, but is so good that he showboats his way and eats up all the scenery. And this movie might have called Jack the Lamp Lighter Returns instead of Mary Poppins Returns at some points. Um, and then there, there, there are the parts where you clearly, you know, Ben Wilshaw should never be allowed to sing again. Um, Meryl Street, please, no more singing unless you you sign on to more Mamma Mia sequels. Um, Angela Lansbury was great. Wait, was she in the original? I, I don't know why she has a cameo here. I, I don't know why Angela Lansbury has a cameo here, but okay, it fits in because she was in Bad Knobs and Broomsticks. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. uh, she might have been in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, which also the Sherman Brothers wrote. Okay. I mean, the soundtrack, that is. So you see, you, that's real, it's really difficult to, to compete against your original Mary Poppins because they've, they've got the killer team of the Sherman Brothers, Julie Andrews, Dick Van Dyke. Oh, but the lighting uh, in this one was good. I mean, uh, it fits the scene, it fits the tone, so it's different, but it always looks beautiful. Good job on the lighting. Uh, I think the choreography is good, although anachronistic. You've got some Parker stunts done in a film so, that's and, set in the 1930s and, i don't know why and some bmx bikes yeah yeah uh, uh, people on bicycles riding them as if they they were bmx bikes but that's really odd so i mean you come to a reassessment of the original mary poppins based on how unrealistic and bad it is yeah for me, I think uh, the original Mary Poppins has its charms. I would rate this film lower than the original Mary Poppins, but you know, children's escapism in movies is completely different these days compared to you know that era. As a kid, you went to a movie to see someone beat up like the Nazis. As a kid, you go to a movie to see a PG-rated version of James Bond complete with spies in under underwater submarines, right? I was being sarcastic. That was Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, by the way. Okay. Oh, that's our thoughts for Mary Poppins. We think, very sadly, you could give, give this a wide miss. Very even sad. if you were a fan, or are a fan of Julie Andrews' original Mary Poppins. Give this a miss. Yeah, I, 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 I mean, I, I feel bad. It's like uh, these old uh, guys always saying, oh, the moves are better in our day, but the movies were better in my day. Or at least, for this genre of movie, the talent that they had in those days, more readily available. Oh, it's just Disney and the whole Force Awakens curse. <laughs> okay, uh, anyway, we'll join you next week as we, after we just learn what we want to watch and review for you. So, like us, comment, subscribe, troll us if you want. Thanks for watching. Bye.